I often get asked, do I drink beer? And the answer is yes. Very rarely, but in the sun you can't beat a beer. So if I was in the sun, I reckon UK, what I'd drink if I was in the UK, Moretti. If I was in the local boozer, Stella maybe. Abroad, Corona. Corona and Peroni. <laughs> What looks like Shakira's ass. No, don't get that in. <laughs> Welcome back. So you've seen the hybrid training. Now you're going to see what it takes to fuel a hybrid athlete. More food, more energy, better performance. So we're going to head into Morrison's now. I'm going to show you exactly what I eat in a day. So first up, phase yogurt, 0% no fat free, Greek. Um, the reason I've gone for this instead of skier as well is because it digests better for me. And it's a little bit thicker, a little bit creamier, so I enjoy it more. So this is going in first. We have 300 gram of this per day. High protein, low fat, perfect. So next up to go with the yogurt, Kellogg's crunchy nut granola, hazelnut and chocolate. Don't even entertain any of the other flavors. Fruit and nuts, all right. Caramelised hazelnuts, not too bad, but we're also on 75 gram of that a day as well. So we'll load up on that, get a couple of bags. Also, if you're like me, who loves granola and you want a lower fat alternative, 30% less fat. 45 gram, 180 calorie. 45 gram, 250. So just be smart with it. So post-workout for me at the minute, rolled oats. We've had the oats discussion before. Don't be entertaining the Scots ones or the jumbo rolled oats. It's all about consistency. So the Quaker rolled oats, the best ones. You know I love my cereal. It's not actually in the diet plan at the minute, but I can adjust it for macros. So my go-to at the moment, and this is new on the market, Kellogg's Wheats, Raisin and Blueberry. Usually bang half a box in each. Give those a try, let me know what you think in the comments because they are elite. And if you're in an off season, the contents are cut really good, like the macros are really good. And for 100 gram, you're getting a tiny bowl because of the volume, they, they weigh a lot. So if you're there eating 200 gram of Cocoa Pops and you can't stomach a, a single mouthful more, get onto these. Oi, mint chalk shake, new flavor. Pre-workout, two squares bars every training day and we're going for the chocolatey flavour. With these, with my clients, I will specify which squares bars to get because if you actually look, everyone's got different calories. I think in order, lowest calories marshmallow, second lowest chocolate and then highest caramel chocolate. I'm not sure about the chocolate orange ones because the bang average. So if you're a coach and you're saying to your clients, two squares bars pre-workout, specify which ones because two chocolate ones compared to two marshmallow, you're probably going to accumulate an extra 100 calories. If you're in an off season and you're chasing performance, these are unbelievable. The macros in them, per biscuit 193, carbohydrate 31. Two of those pre-workout, what's fat? Fat content, 5.9. Blueberry flavour as well, like a blueberry muffin. Yeah. So at the minute, I'm actually having 450 gram of berries per day, which is costing me an arm and a leg. But what we've got here now is blueberries and raspberries. I like to mix it up. So I'll give you an insight of the meals so you can understand why we've just got what we've got in the trolley. Meal one usually typically starts off with 150 gram of yogurt, 200 gram of berries, and two scoops of whey protein. Then of course, the final meal, is again the same, 150 gram of 0% fat free yogurt, 75 gram of granola, and again 150 gram of berries. Then we've got the pre-workout meal, and then we've got the post-workout meal. So you can see, very carb based at the minute, but we're eating for performance, so not aesthetics. If you don't know about ice creams, get to know about these. They're the goat, I'm gonna show you my top three. Number two. And then this was a very close number two. These are a joke. If you've not had these, get on them. But, oh, fuck. You all know I used to be a little bit of a party boy at uni and just growing up in general. If you're hungover, hangover hack 101. 
half a box of those gets rid of the hangover mouth we all know about and sorts his head out. Now we're going to rate the pre-workout at the minute because food's high. I can perform well, don't typically need a stim, but I am still having a monster. I feel like it's just placebo. I just have it on the way to the gym. We're going to rate the monsters. Number one for me. Standard white boy number two. And then I am going to put it out there. I honestly think number three, I don't rate this. I don't rate the, the energy gold. I don't rate the ultra watermelon. I did first time trying it after that. No good. This gets taste buds popping off. Number three, they're my top three. First, second, third. Now, when I was a serious bodybuilder, I did used to get bottled water because I was all about the 1% game, but it was just costing an arm and a leg. I mean, look, 3 99 for five bottles, six bottles. So now I'm more of a filter guy. I've got a nice filter from Amazon where I just filter my tap water through that. But if you do like a nice water, <laughs> Island Spring or Evian does the job. Um, but it's a great way of tracking how much you're having, to be honest. And that's what I said on previous videos. Just, if you want some water, it's a great way of tracking. So what I do is I get one and then fill it up and use my, um, my water filter. I'm definitely gonna get some shit for this. Tight. <laughs> if anybody knows me, you'll know I'm tight. Another carb choice for one of the meals, bagel fins. We're gonna go for the plain ones. And then we're going to get the soft seeded ones in as well, just as a, a mix up. Calories are very similar, so it's not really going to matter. And as you can see from this video, of course, we're still eating to a nutrition program, still tracking every single bit of protein, carbs, fats. But remember, I'm eating for performance now, so I need to go to the gym and show up every session, be able to keep up, be able to perform. So I am in a surplus now. I'm going to show you that I can have a little bit more variety, a little bit more balance. I'm not tracking the 1% of three to four calories. So I'll show you that I'm a little bit more lenient with sauces and seasonings now because I can be. Oh, that's rice. Right, let's have a look. We'll keep this here. This could be a green medley with a hint of garlic and herbs. Coach's orders, I'm not actually told to track veg. I'm just told to have the same amount per meal. Of course, all veg has calories in it. With my bodybuilding mindset, that's still very much there. I do watch everything that I eat. So what I found is very easy, rather than weighing it every single day, prepping it, is just getting little packs of these. So you get four bags in here. But I'm gonna try a couple. Alex has told me to try these today. But I'm actually looking at them now, and per bag, 110 calories, per bag, 77. Fat, 0.8, fat, 5.6. Stitching me up, you. But we're going to try them anyway. Like I said, that little 1% to 2% isn't really going to be that much difference now. Not chasing aesthetics, not chasing improvements in body composition. Still going to maintain the muscle and the look, but a little bit more balance. Then the first, well, the second protein selection, chicken breast. If you are watching yourself in terms of budget, I would definitely stay away from Morrison's and get yourself to a butcher's like I did in the previous video. But um, we are just kind of getting a few bits today. This isn't the typical weekly shop. So we're just going to grab a kilo of these. But if you're trying to watch your money, get to a butcher's. If you read this out, what would you get? 150 gram of beef steak or mince. Three weeks into diet and I still don't know what I'm buying. <laughs> eight gram of fat so you're miles behind of that whereas this british beef mince 12 percent fat so if we go 100 gram 11 still not enough when you transition from such a regimented regime like bodybuilding with nutrition where you are eating primarily for that improvement of the look of the physique i've just been thrown off a little bit here because i'm meant to be getting beef mince so naturally i was like oh yeah let's get straight to five percent beef mince this is a meal here where I need to be getting a higher amount of fat. So that means I've just looked at macros. I'm actually going to have to get the 20% fat beef mince or get steak. So it's like all of a sudden I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, actually, we're not just going for the lean protein sources here. On a training day, we're still eating a decent amount of fat because we're chasing performance. So more calories are better in moderation. So yeah, it's confusing, but we'll get there. What looks like Shakira's ass. No, don't get that in. <laughs> Done it. Fillet steak, where they found that? 664 for that. Pecker. And it's caked in fat, won't catch me paying that. Surely not. 
two at run at litters here. I'm not getting them, me. So up next for the carb sauce, white potatoes. So for carbs, we've got bagels, potatoes, oats, granola, squares, bars. These are going with a chicken meal. So I'm currently eating 700 gram of potato on a training day at the minute, which is quite a lot. All I do on a non-training day is I take these out and I reduce them from 700 to 300. That is literally the only difference. Now, as I said, I'm not really tracking greens as much. So I like to mix it up. So we've got a bistro style salad and a house salad. Just some additional micronutrients and greens. Remembering that my audience is primarily bodybuilders, I will always give back. Of course, a hybrid is my journey now. Still gonna be bodybuilding content, but this is grocery shopping as a hybrid athlete. But of course, sources always come into play. So remember, you bodybuilders who are tracking, be mindful, no more than 10 to 15 gram per serving, but your Nando's are always a go-to. This one for me, or this one personally, uh, with your chicken meals. And then one that I always preach to clients is the Frank's Red Hot original sauce. I'm too tame to have that, I can't have it. Uh, but again, per serving, in 100 mil of that, you're getting 29 calories. And in a full bottle, is 148 mil. So, be smart. Uh, what else we're saying? Rich and creamy truffle mayonnaise. Oh, you boot off. Get that on your burger. Vegan mayo. <laughs> Thank you. A common mistake I see. Light mayo. You can go one better. Lighter than light. That one goes back. And that one goes in. Don't cough. Oils. One that a lot of people get wrong, I'll get a lot of clients who will just still use oils when they first start. Um, and it's like, look, strip it back. Look at the variety that Fry Light have got now. So you've got your mild and light, you've got your garlic, you've got your coconut, you've got your olive oil, you've got your butter, which literally spray that on a bagel five times, just like having butter. Leave the oils, if you're prepping especially, definitely leave the oils and get these. Um, and even now, transitioning to hybrid, I'll still be using these 100% because there's that much of a variety, you can't go wrong. I often get asked, do I drink beer? And the answer is yes, very rarely, but in the sun you can't beat a beer. So if I was in the sun, I reckon UK, what I'd drink if I was in the UK, Moretti. If I was in the local boozer, Stella maybe the rundown local boozer. Um, abroad, Corona. Corona and Peroni. <laughs> Corona or Peroni. Um, but of course, like I said, I always drink like seltzers or spirits. So we're gonna show you my go-tos. Now, I am a gin guy. So if I'm drinking gin, that one's firmly last. Palmer Violet, tragic. But Blood Orange Gin. Even gets its fine packaging like that. That's because it's the goat. Blood Orange Gin and Lemonade, Diet Lemonade. That is my go-to drink when I'm out now. Vodka, we'll not talk about vodka. Gin and a, and a little diet lemonade, unreal. To all my young 18 to like 25 year old lads audience, I know the away days are a big, big event in the calendar. So if you're getting the trains or minibuses, wherever you're going, these are the go-to. Stay off the beers, get a bag full of these. Gin and diet tonic, tastes like cat piss, but no calories. Pink gin and tonic, elite. And then the UK seems to be tapping into the Celsa market now. So Miami vibes, you've got your Bud Light, Celsa, Passion Fruit, again, lower on calories. And then you've got your strawberry, Bud Light. So you know the drill. Don't be getting on the minibus with six Coronas because that's over a thousand calories. Five or six of those, you're waking up lean the next morning. So they're not in the diet, but giving back to the bodybuilder audience. Rice cakes have developed over time. Let's not be in the lightly salted callow or organic ones. Yeah, they're all right, but as I've shown you on previous videos, look at the variety. You've got chocolate chip, smooth caramel, salt and vinegar. 62 calories if you're in an off season, loading four or five of them a day. They're so light, they digest so easy. Game on. Also, if you're a coffee drinker like me and you want to watch calories, 
can get almond milk, but it doesn't taste the same in coffee, so I just opt for the skimmed British milk. So I write a lot of, a lot of diet plans for a lot of clients, and a really good lean protein source is obviously beef mince, because it's not too high in fat, digests really easily. But a lot of the common questions is, what can I have with my beef mince? Because dry, it's not the best. So my go-to, and this is if you're in typically, I would say a maintenance slash off-season, Again, low fat, dolmio. If you're in a competition prep, chopped in tomatoes are the one. Now, if you're like me, who's generally got quite a good balance at the minute, so tomato and chili sauce, if you put that in your mince, it's a game changer. Per 100 gram, there's only 62 calories, so I typically have 50 gram. So you're literally talking 31 calories, carbohydrates free. Get that in basket. People always ask me how I get my protein intake in. High life chicken breast, cat treats, white fish. Nah, I'm only kidding. Got to look after the cat. So let's see how much, roughly, three days of nutrition costs being a hybrid athlete. And we've still got to go to a butcher's. £69 for probably three days of food. And like I said, we've still got to go to butchers because we'll be out of beef mints. You can do it more cost effective. You can go to Aldi, you can go to Lidl. You can get more meat from the butchers. Um, but this is just a typical example if you go to the bigger supermarkets, how much food can cost. £69 for three days. Not even ready for this smoke when boxing. When I get in boxing ring, everyone who starts giving me that little back, back chat. <laughs> No, seriously though, you'd be seeing these on content, you'd be seeing these fast hands. But that's a, a roundup for the grocery shopping. We'll have a taste test of this though, because I've not ranked it yet. So is this COG? COG, yeah. It's 10 o'clock and you've got me drinking Monster. Mm, it is nice, it's like Red Bull. It get... I'd say that's third, you know. Above green, would you? Banging, let me get rid of that. That is nice here. Mate, that is nice, it's like Red Bull. Isn't it? So on the new journey, thought I'd show you what the new setup of the nutrition looks like. We'll follow it up with a full day of eating, because I know you all live those. And we'll show you how we put the meals together. But as always, thanks for watching. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. We've got some serious content coming soon. Another location, not saying where, and it's a permanent residency, so we'll see. See you in the next one.